Hi, everyone. I'm Keith Vitale. Welcome to Sidekick Podcast. In this episode, I'm really happy to be bringing back uh, Marcus Taylor again. I had him as uh, doing an interview last week, and I had to bring him back because, you know, this is a guy I get along with so much. He's like a soul brother to me. We have the same interests. Now, this guy is an actor, great stuntman, terrific martial artist, and he got his, his uh, really his break in 2017 when he played Suge Knight and a movie called Straight Out of Compton. Please welcome my good friend. Hey, Marcus, how you doing, buddy? Hello, sir. It's always a blessing to, to talk to you all the time. So I'm just happy to be here. Well, good. We just miss each other. I was in Clearwater visiting my son, Travis, as well as hanging out with Lauren Abaddon and his wife. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, awesome. we were talking all about you, but you were here in Atlanta. So we yeah. our ships just miss, missed each other. Yeah, for now. But we'll we'll see each other soon. I'm looking forward to it. Good. Well, good. I, I, I would love to hear that one day you can maybe relocate, you know, here to Atlanta because it's where the film studios are. Yeah, that's that's my goal um, this year um, for the summer. Um, my wife and I and my family, we're going to move down there and, and see what's what. So I'm looking oh, forward so to cool. it. Yeah. Well, you're going to get 100% support from us, from me. That's for sure. Thank you, sir. Thank so, you, sir. And we'll be hooking up from time to time. It's going to be great. Let's yeah. Get- it and other you know i have people come in all the time so Heck yeah, i'm man. gonna look forward to that you know, i can't wait i i can't too and I, i'm not just saying that but there's certain people that i know i'll get along with better yeah. than others i get along with everybody if you yeah. can't get along with me i know it's not me it's you because you i get along with everybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we have so much of the same interest, it's just incredible. We can yes, sir. we could go out to eat, and then they had to kick us out because we'd be talking the whole time. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll probably have to like uh, uh, ring out the entire room just just for us to just chill out and talk. I'm serious. Bring on all, all the right. all my, all my heroes in one place and just just talk. I I pay just for that, definitely. Oh, Can't well, that's wait. so cool. Yes, sir. You know, where last time we you know we um I had you on for the show. It was mm-hmm. such a great time. I walked off and I was so excited afterwards. I'm going, it's just fun to talk with someone who has the same interests and you go back and forth and, yes. you know, it's, I'm not it's educating cool. anybody. I was like, you're educating me and back and forth. <laughs> so it was fun. But uh, I wish got to mention that we are going to be working together later this year with Cynthia Rock. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Man, um, I'm a huge fan of hers. Um, wait, I mean, even kind of before she did you know, the, her first film in Hong Kong, you know, and um, growing up with just watching her films. Then I finally get to meet her. We, I, I, I invited her to to eat for lunch once and uh, I didn't really, um, she said it okay, but for me, it's like, if it's not like definite, definitely, I don't, I don't think it's gonna, it's like, it's a go. So <laughs> the, I think that the, the, the next day she called me like, so what's going on? I thought we were going to eat. And I was like, you didn't like, you didn't say it was like that. I was like, yeah, but you didn't say when. And, and so I was like, I owe her that. But I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm digressing. So go back, uh, fast forward to, to now, Black Creek. When I found out she was going to do Black Creek and you were in it and, and, and Richard, uh, um, oh God. Norton? I, yeah, yes, yes. And um, Richard Norton, uh, Billy Blanks, uh, Billy Arquita, Don Wilson, Don Wilson, all, yeah, um, all you guys are in it. I texted her. I was like, "Can I please be in it, please?" I, I this just I said it just like that. Can I be in it, please? Right? <laughs> and and she was like, "Let's see." And I was like, "Okay." And I'm just I'm just excited. And she says, "Okay, you want to be in it?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll write you in." And I was like, "I was bugging." So, you know, and, and I wasn't going to say anything. And then, you know, there was like, um, you know, a, a poster with me in it saying, you know, right. Omar Gis Taylor has joined in the cast, joined the cast of Black, you know, Black Creek. So I was like, oh, we're going to have so much fun. I know this for a fact. We're going to have so much fun. I can't wait. I, I can't wait. I know. It's so cool because you texted me on Facebook and said, hey, I'm going to be in the film. And then right. I told the, the brochure that Cynthia had produced and put together. Yeah. I'm standing right next to you on the brochure. It's, it's awesome. pretty cool. It's very cool. Yeah. Oh my no, God. No, it's as good as a movie. 
I got to be yeah. in there. there it, I hope we have scenes where we're all in together instead yeah. of spreading us out and thin so that we go, oh, I never saw that person on the set, you know, because he was working this week or next week or whatever. Right, right. I hope it's one scene where everybody's together for the final, I don't know. I haven't even read the script yet. Me either, um, either. I told her a cameo is great for me. I just want to have a scene with um, my mentor, Richard Norton. I love this guy. I, he hey, started me in the films. Yeah. I had my first fight with him. I want to end my fu- my career in movies with him. That's beautiful. So all of them kind of made me bump shoulders and look at him. We look at each other and I walk away. That's all I need. I don't need anything else. I don't need to get beaten up. <laughs> you know, you know what Gary Daniels goes, can I, you mind if I can beat you up on the, on the, on the film and blood, you know, blood brothers. Yeah. Or sorry, blood moon. Yeah. So that's I cool. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't wait. Just, I mean, I met, I met him. I'm in Atlantic city. For C- Sifu uh, Goldman's um, um, fight, a martial artist weekend, make it weekend. And I was just like, right. there he is. You know, and I love his famous line, painful. Every time he beats somebody half to death, he says, painful. And it, get, it, it drags up <laughs> crazy. I told him he should get, he should copyright that and, and get some t shirts and stuff. He, he made millions. <laughs> he made millions. Yeah. That's a famous line. He's so good he's he, he played in my one of my favorite tv shows of all time called spartacus 2 you know so oh my yes. gosh yeah i, I, I remember yeah. when, I, when i saw it i was like wow she said no it's on spartacus and i, I kind right. of i was mad well get I, this yeah. all you guys were like getting you guys were all together for the uh robert goldman event yes. in las vegas i was getting i was here at the same time I thought it was gonna be part of all that ceremony, but I wasn't. Mine was part of another ceremony the next night. Oh. And I was with Billy Blakes and all these different people for acting. Mine was more of yeah. getting a stunt acting kind of award. Right. It was the icon award. Right. And a guy named uh, Vince Sherry. I just met him there. He got the award with me. Yeah. And I just saw on the poster he's the newest acquisition. For Black Creek, so oh, Cynthia's invited him to be on the cast as well. So it's great. Can, that's going to be great. It's going. It's like uh, yeah. it's going to be a nonstop action pack. Every every oh, hero, God. you know, throughout the entire, yep. you know, from the seventies, eighties, nineties to now, in one film, and, and she's yeah. taking the yeah, this, helm, and she's taking the helm. It, it, I love it. Yeah, and I tell you what. It's kind of overwhelming more than you think, I, more than she knows. Yeah. When I did my first film, uh, it was uh, the one with Benny Akitas and Richard Norton. Force it was five. Force Five. Yes. And uh, Joe Lewis. Well, anyway, they brought 50 of the top martial artists at the time, mm-hmm. all there to be good guys, bad guys. They needed, you know. Yeah. And I was number one in the country at the time, so they all <laughs> wanted to work out with me. But I had, I just had all these people yeah. that I had heard about just like this, this going to be in Black Creek, and I was overwhelmed. But you know, uh, I remember Pat Johnson with the court with the stunt fighter, I was stunt corger, coordinator. He would try to corral us and get us to work, but we were so busy on the sidelines talking and working out. And you can't put all those people together and, and not expect, get excited. Yeah, you know? I'm gonna do what I'm told though, but it's gonna be hard. I'm, a, yeah. I'm still gonna do my little. Hi, I'm I'm Marcus. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> you know, I was just talking to I. I loved interviewing my good friend Keith Strandberg. I love that guy. Yeah. How he discovered Van Damme and all that. Yes. And then we were, were we were talking about good guys and bad guys and method acting, and we were talking about you oh, being really? on the set of you know Straight Out of Compton. Oh yeah, and how you stayed in character as a method actor. Yes. And the guy I did the film with, and No Retreat, No Surrender Three, Ryan Hunter, he stayed mm-hmm. in character. Now get this. Here's how life works. Seem in no martial arts. Now he's a good athlete. Yes. God bless him. I don't even know him that much. You know why? He didn't allow me to get to know him yeah. because he was method acting. acting. Well, he he says I want to hate you the whole time. Fine. So I I never even you know never had lunch with the guy. Yeah. So anyway, Lauren and I, who are athletes, who are martial artists, mm-hmm. who had done everything we possibly could in our fields. Yeah. We are now. When I look on the on the uh, go to YouTube and I'll see excerpts from No Retreat, No Surrender. Yeah. We'll have 30, 80, 200,000. Guess what? Ryan Hunter, for that same scene, Uh he has 3.5 million views. And I go, he doesn't even know karate. Why are you looking at his crap? (laughs) I feel like that too sometimes. He doesn't even know karate. Yeah, I feel like that too sometimes. You see an actor 
who has no experience at all, never stepped foot in any dojo at all, you know, and he learns a few tricks and, 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 and things for the film. And even, you know, some of these, some of these actors, they don't like to train or learn. Right. I'm, I mean, it's, it's the truth. Some of them don't like to learn, I, but I, you know, but I, I help them out and, and do some things and then they do one thing. It's not, and they can't even kick past their hip. <laughs> get, right. Right. They get 10 million views. I'm doing a 360 yeah. kick in the air, you know, knocking somebody out, you know, and it's like, right, right. You yeah, you give I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I haven't, I haven't, uh, figured out the, uh, uh, everything about uh, podcasting, yeah, but I love it. It's the most fun I've ever had yeah. interviewing people like you. Yes, sir. And I've done Cynthia, Lauren, uh, Avedon, and oh, Richard Norton. Just think about all these great Jeff Pruitt. Just think about all these wonderful people. I'm in heaven. Yeah. It's like a kid in the candy store going, You like MMs? I'm putting you in the MM factory That's right here. I'm like, Oh my God. I, I, yeah, I enjoy this. I love meeting. People like, like, you know, my, like all of you guys are my heroes. And, and like, and I tell you, I tell everybody the first, like the first people that got me into martial arts, it wasn't Bruce, but he's still the man, but it was you and Shokasugi, you know, that, wow, that, that's that so cool. really changed it for me. Like your kicks were so strong. And I'm like, I remember um, in one fight scene on, um, uh, uh, Ninja, uh, Revenge of the Ninja, you, you just, you, you're just like round kicking this one dude in the head like over it, over it. But it looked like, right, like, right. Were, like everyone just looked like it worked, you know? And then you do the back back kick and I was like, yo, this dude just not playing. It's like, it's not, it, it, it's like you were <laughs> bad, you were badass. You know, you both of you guys were badass. Wow. So I wanted to do that, you know? I wanted to do that. And then when I'm starting to learn it, I got my like inspiration from you and show, you know, um, and, and, and we love and then, love hearing yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, and then you, then like when you came on the scene doing other films, I was like, finally he's back. You know, and I was like, you know, it was great. Oh, that's so cool. She questioned too because I really want to focus uh, on the rest of this interview in yes. a minute on on breaking into films and advice you'd have for other people. But you mentioned Billy Blanks. I used to train with him and work out. One of my black belts used to work out with him. Did you ever work out or were you ever in the film with Billy Blanks? I didn't have the honor. I met him at um last summer at the um Dragon Fest uh in in, in, I got in uh, Los Angeles. And um when I saw him, I was just like, another hero. Oh man. Yeah, he's good. And he just saw Did you meet ever meet his partner? I'm sorry? Did you ever meet his partner, John Arthur? Did you ever meet John no, Arthur? No, not yet. No. Yeah, I didn't know if you did or not. No, I didn't, but well here's the yeah. thing. Yeah, I, these guys are just great athletes. He was just starting out Taibo when I'd go work out with him in the mornings. And then he would do the Taibo stuff, and then Taibo just took you oh, know, yeah, off. Oh, yeah, yeah. All over the world. That was crazy. Just just nuts. It went all over the but, world. But, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have, you know, I know even if people don't come up to me and ask me, how do you break into films or what's the first steps? I know that's a fantasy that most martial artists have had from kids to women to adults. You know, you might be a doctor, you might be an engineer, mm -hmm. you you whatever, but in the back of your mind, you've watched a movie and you go, wouldn't it be nice to do that? Yeah. You, how did you break into films? What was the first thing you did? Why? How did you get discovered? Discovered. Mm. Well, I be, I started doing, like I was an extra uh, from 1998 to 2000, doing little bits, things. Didn't really, I tried to get in at that particular time, but just, I felt like, um, I didn't know enough, and 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 it just it wasn't the right time, I guess. Um, so I went right. back into fighting, teaching, and training, and finally in 2010, um, I I saw a um, he was a he was a judge for like UFC judge, but he was also a stunt coordinator. And um, wow, it's bad when you forget people's names. And, oh, Douglas Crosby is his name. He's out of New York on the East Coast. Right. Douglas Crosby. So um, uh, he gave me the information and he gave me a number for this other other stunt coordinator. And he says, talk to him. And I just started sending all my info to every stunt coordinator that, that I could find. And I would put I would attach 
my 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 fight reel and my uh like my ability reel. And at that time, I was over three hundred pounds. So the stuff that I was doing wow. was, you know, I think everything's spectacular, and, and that's what they said. So, um, I got a call from one stunt coordinator says, um, can you do that stuff on film? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, my first job, I was a stunt double for an actor on an HBO t uh, HBO uh, show. And um, that was the start of it. Then I started, I got another job. I, and that was a, a fight scene with Ving Rhames. So I was like, okay, well, wow. it's, 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 it's starting. But what, do, what, how can I do to a uh, forward momentum? So what I did was uh, I found a, um, it was a, um, oh shoot, I'm bad with, I'm bad when I'm on the spot. But anyway, I found this um, this link. It had all of the uh, movie and TV um, sets on location sets. It was called On Location Vacation. That means you go anywhere in the country, you can find a movie or TV set that's going on that day. So I would always have my yes. wow. So I would always have my information with me, my you know yeah. headshot, resume, so forth, and I would just say, "Hi, I'm on Marcus Taylor. I'm a stunt man. I just would like to." give you my credentials and maybe I'll be a good fit for you. And also I would go to studios, do the exact same thing. And, you know, one thing about, for me, I'm just speaking for myself, being in stunts, uh, you know, there's a little clickish, little clickish stuff. And I remember I would hear, you know, you got to wait your turn and wait in line. And I'm like, oh, ah, I ain't waiting for Sorry, excuse my language. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Like, I don't got time no, to wait. I was no. in my thirties. I was like, no, 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 I'm not waiting for nothing. I finally got well, what I wanted. And I'm taking no. it. So, um, I would get some jobs, but I, I I couldn't get some of the um the auditions, and I didn't know how. I would ask around, and some people weren't telling me on purpose. You know, that happens. So I went to L.A. And and I did the on location vacation for uh, when I was in LA, and I got jo I got jobs. I, I I um I my first job was working for Eric Norris, uh, Chuck Norris's son, and right, yeah, right. And it was like. And then I got to work with um, JJ Perry, and on that same show, and I, I he is him. yeah he's yes, really good. He's awesome. So I'm a big fan of his as well. So these two guys, and 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 I I remember. Um, I got a job working there for, uh, it was a show called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, it's like a Marvel um, show. Marvel. No, oh, wait, I've seen, I've seen. Yeah. So oh, I've okay. seen all of it. So, so I was in one episode of that and we were there for about two weeks or so. And um, everything was cool. And, and I, and I said to, um, to Eric, I said, Hey, can I meet your dad? And he was just like, really? You really want to meet my dad? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm yeah, of course. He's like, yeah, he's in Texas, and you know, I don't know. I'm like, I'll do whatever I gotta do. And he says, "All right, can you do a backflip off that wall?" And he he just he just said that, and I'm like, "That's what I do." So I did it. <laughs> I went. And I wish somebody taped it because I don't know if I'm gonna do that anymore. And I was over 300 pounds, so I did a I did a I did a 360 kick. I went over the wall in a backflip. He just like went like, I'm gonna see what I can do. And so I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna see what I can do. And I was like, great. And he started hiring me a lot. I, I was on Sons of Anarchy because of Eric Norris. And I was starting working for other coordinators in LA. And then sometimes I was working, you know, I was doing both New York and LA. And I know. Okay, people talk about um, what's the word? Uh, local hire, local hire. I don't believe in that at all. I, I I feel like the best should get the job. That's just my opinion. I don't know how you know. Everybody's different. I want to work. I want to be the best guy. I'm going to be the guy that's going to be there from beginning to end. I'm not going to be afraid what to do. I'm going to be loyal. I'm going to do what I'm told. I think that's what you're supposed to do. You know, you your job. Yeah, attitude. Yeah, I had the I had the attitude 
to 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 be that person whenever you needed me to. I was available for that. And I think that's why I started to get more work in some auditions. And then I got the um the uh the audition on actorsaccess.com. A friend of mine, Joe Monty, she's an actress as well. She she told me about this um this audition. It was on Actors Access. So I said, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. And I I um I, I filled out my stuff. Um I went to the studio. Cause I, I I'm sorry, um the coordinator for Strata Compton, he he called me back and said, Wow, you you kind of resemble him. And I was like, I, yeah, I made myself look really like him. I studied him for months. I studied Suge Knight for months, really, every for hours, for hours, just to see, you know, um, if I can really do it. So I go back to, I'm New York, I go back to California, and I do my first audition. I wear a red shirt, because, you know, that's, you know, the he was affiliated with, you know, the, the gang members, the Bloods. He wears that right. red shirt, sunglasses, gold rings. I had this huge cigar. Now, at the time, I had no idea how to smoke a cigar ever. Never smoked a cigar before. But I started to learn how to smoke. It was rough at first. I at least I didn't I didn't light it. I just would, you know, like I'm smoking it. And I come in for my first audition. And after that, they was like, we want you to go to meet the director. Would that be okay? I said, sure. So I go to, to the set. It's the first week of shooting. The first week of shooting, I go to the set and um, I, I meet the director, F. Gary Gray. So he comes up to me and looks at me up and down. He says, can you eat? I said, for money? Yes. <laughs> for money? Yes. Go to the wardrobe real quick and, and they'll take care of you. I went out and he was like, possibilities. All right. Well, you got two more auditions left. If you're good, you hear. here. That's it. And he just he walked away. I was like, that's all I needed. So I'm in that process. I was eating a lot, a lot of food. Uh, <laughs> even before that, I was eating a lot of food just because I felt like I was going to get the part. So I had to I wanted to be really ready, you know, really ready for the part. So I did two audition, two auditions. The last audition, uh, it was on set. Um, I'm going to say, say it real quick. I made them think I was going to literally attack the Dr. Cray, Dr. Dre character. So I did, right. he did three takes. And on the last take, I asked um, the Dr. Dre actor, his name is Corey Hawkins. I said, Corey, you trust me? He was like, yeah, whatever you do, don't back up. It's important. I said, okay. He said, okay. So we're, we're doing the last, it was the last scene from, Strata Compton, the very last scene where Dr. Dre is leaving the record company to, to go on his own. And we're going back and forth. I'm talking about him and his wife and this, and we kept ad living. So it got really heated where the, the people that were the producers and, and, and Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, they were like, what's going on here? They weren't sure what's going on, but they, but, but F. Gary Gray, the director, kept letting it go. And then at the last moment, I, I, I said I said something, and then I ran towards him with this crazy look in my eye. And I'm like, that's it. Thank you. Everybody flipped out. They were like, oh, my God. Don't. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's, yeah. what, and that's how I got the part. They, they really thought I was going to well, be that guy. So I got that. So. These are the different elements of breaking yes. into films. First, we talk about perfecting your skill yes. as a martial artist. You know how you said you could do your spins, your yes. swing mm -hmm. kicks, your jumps, your back, all that stuff. Well, guess what? Let's say you're competing for a role with somebody that looks same height, yes. weight, looks like you. He can't do that, yes. but you can. You're going to get that role over him. So I always tell people the first thing, before you think about auditioning or anything else, resumes, Let's do this. Make sure you can perfect your skill. Make yes. sure both sides, because every time you tell that director, well, I'm really better on this side than that side. Well, guess what? The director looks at you or the stunt coordinator looks at you and goes, give yeah. me somebody else exactly. who can do it both sides. 
you know, and I've been at fault for that as well. So you've got to be able to go and, and be proficient with everything, your kicks, your jumps. And guess what? The more you bring to the table, your par- parkour yeah. stuff you do, all your jumps and flips yeah. and that stuff, you bring a thousand times more to the table than me. You really do. You do, because I couldn't do all that. I was limited on certain sides, yeah. certain kicks. And sometimes, you know, I, I've gone on record. I'd have to tell the director, going, I'm really not that good that side. The stuff coordinators already put this, this sequence together. It takes yeah, time to put these yeah. moves together. And so they come to you and you go, oh, by the way, I can't do this, yeah. this, or this. Then, you know, unless you're the star, oh, yeah, you you're replay. You're, 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 so, they move on. Yeah. Yes, you're good. So number one, perfect your skill. Don't even go for an audition. Yeah. You might know the director. You might know the actor. They might get you a break, but no. it's not going to go far because the way you break into films, action films, is by yes. stunt fighter. Now, guess what? There's... People that can do stunt stuff, they can do Mm -hmm. car crashes, light themselves on fire and jump out of buildings. That's the long way to do it. You'll still do it, but it might take you years to get good enough at all that to do it. But as a stunt martial artist, you can go in right off the bat, make that star you're fighting look good. The second thing is reactions. Your phenomenal reactions. How do I know that? I've seen your reels. We're going to talk about your reels in a minute. You practice not only kicking and punching, but receiving. So when you send a reel in, the casting director or whomever's looking at it, they're looking and going, he can play this part, he can play that part, look what he can do, mm-hmm. look how he reacts. Yeah. That's so important. And then the third thing is, let's say you've got your reactions down. Let's say you're a good martial artist. Yeah. Now what do I do? And that's mm-hmm. when you've started already. Let me show you something before we go any further. I'll show oh, you how fun. I got started. Great. I was fortunate. I was on this well, magazine some, yeah. cover with, with I, Mike I Stone. That. And Jackie Chan has a big article in it. And then I was on this magazine cover, Yep, Kick. Well, anyway, Priscilla McDonald's happened to be looking for a new star. And they happened to see that look and called me up. And that's how I got started. My break came from awesome. the magazine cover. Actually, these were the two. Both editors take claim from my whatever little thing my head going, no, I did it, you did it. But I got started that way. So other people that don't have magazine covers, what you've got to do is you've got to go in and learn just like you did. You start small. Sometimes there's nothing more than being an extra. But, but what you've got to do is be proficient. And then how did you get your resume? What did you do about your resume? Was it a, a three-quarter shot? Was it a full body shot? Did you have resumes um, made? How did, did you do it? Um, the, first, the first shot, you know, um, head shot. And then I, it would be, it would, and I right. would have two different, two different looks. One uh more um you know approachable and then a mean one you know like a mean look like for for a villain right and right. then um I, I i kept it we i didn't we didn't go crazy the, the, my photographer and i we just wanted to make sure we they see you know um the the different levels i can i can do just from looking at you right and that's what we because i got a lot of tattoos so i had the one when i'm just like really mad and mean you know, and then I have like an enduring, right, you know, right. hi, you know, I could be the bartender, right, the right. doctor, you know, whatever you want. And, and that, that works uh, for me. And I kind of liked going the bad guy route because I always felt like I got more work because being the bad guy, the, the villain, you know, because I mean, that's what, that's what a stuntman is for. We're, we're paid to make the actors right. and actresses right. look great, not just good but great and that's what that's what i did i'm, I'm gonna make sure this guy gets to become the baddest guy on the planet and if, if people if i can be, make them believe that that means i'm gonna get more work then the film right. is profitable and once the film is profitable they say hey stunt guy you're good and then the stunt guy will tell me like you know what i'm gonna use you a little bit more times you know stuff like that so that's that's what i that's what i did that's that's so perfect. So you, your resume is awesome because you've got and it's expensive no, to get a, one done now. But remember, your reflection of your resume. If your resume is yeah. cheap looking or not done professional, then right. it's a red flag. The red flag means they're going to take a look at it and go, exactly. "Nah, he doesn't know what he's doing," or she knows doesn't know. Yeah. He's tossing in the trash can. But if it's done, and what you've got to do is see, check on other yeah. people's resumes. If you're tr- interested in breaking into films, check on others and see what yeah. size they have. And then copy it. Don't and reinvent yeah. the wheel because 
in the movie industry, they're not looking for you to reinvent the wheel. They want you to be standard, follow the standard rules. So now you've got your resume. Then you get your break as sometimes as as just a, start, a small stunt role. But guess what? When you do that so well and you make that person look good, you're going to be invited back. And then sometimes they're going to do yeah. what they call throw you a line. And when they throw you a lot of dialogue, it allows you exactly. then to get your SAG card. And once you had your bag card, it opens up yes. Pandora's box for you. Now you can do anything because you have a SAG card. Because, but guess what? Yeah, you've you got do. to crawl before you walk. So you've got to first yes. be proficient in your martial arts mm -hmm. and then learn your reactions and then start putting things together. First your resume and then your reels. You got an anger management <laughs> reel or some kind of reel you did with this. Thank it was you. fantastic, man. I loved it. So did you take that reel? Would you send that reel in to a casting sure director? Um, what would you do? That was with... Um, his name is uh, Jeremy Sample. He's he's a New York based uh, stunt coordinator now. Before he, you know, he was he's one of the top right stunt stuntmen in the entire world, entire world. And then, yeah, so wow. and we just kind of we met at one movie and he saw some of my you know my reels and he and he said, well, I try to do that, but I can't do it. I'm too big, and I'm like 300. He was only like 260. So, so I was like, I showed him how to do it within one minute. And when he, when he did it, cause it's, it's just steps and movements. So once I talk, yeah, technique. Right. And technique. I showed him how to do a 360 kick, a, like a beginner one, you know? And he, when he did it, everybody looked at him and was like, wow, I know you were good. He's like, I just thought I'm and it. And then now if use my language, he says, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. So then I. So, so, um, I was talking to friends of his, other stunt men, and I told, I, I said, I've been working with Jeremy Sample, and it's like, oh, I know Sample. He's good for you know the big guy to get beat up, but he's not a real martial artist. Uh, you know, he can't do kicks like like you can. I was like, I'm going to prove you guys wrong. And when when people say stop, you know, when people talk, you know, I want to prove them wrong. Right. So I said, Jeremy. Let's do something together. Let's do two guys that are big guys, big and tall guys, and let's do it just a, a drag out fight that shows some technique but aggression. And um, he was like, "Okay, let's do it." And he was nervous. He was. I said, "Don't be nervous." And that right there, when when we did it, it went it went crazy. Everybody watched it. Everybody went viral. Um, I got we got work from it. Oh, did you put the real? Look at that. Do you put the real? This is yep. good for the listening mm -hmm. audience that are interested. Even in the back of the mind, you're going, oh, I don't want to be a star. And then going, I wonder how I could be a, how I can start. You can't be a start until you start, until you get your, yeah. you know, your role where you can at least break into the films. Once you're in, yeah. everybody started someplace. I was fortunate. My first yeah. role was a star and role. Yeah. That's very rare. You know, but you got to break in and the best way to do it. I mean, you could get a job within two or three months if, if, yeah. you're, if you're proficient martial arts, you know how to do reactions. If you're in the right place at the right time and they see yeah. you perform like you can perform, Marcus, you go, I want you. Because let me tell you something. The director is looking. Most they of don't. the time, they don't even know what they're looking for. Guess how they know? They don't know until they see it. It's like buying a shirt. When yeah. I go buy shirts at the store, I don't go, I'm looking for a, right. a red polka dot shirt. I go through my shirts and go, man, oh, I like this shirt. You don't know until you see it. So now when they see you perform, they go, I don't even care if it's in the script. Yes. I can now yeah. create something for you. Yes. And that's what happens all the time. So, all right, so I've got you now with your reel. I've got you with your resume. You put your reel on YouTube with yes. some other yeah, stuff that got some mm -hmm. some notoriety but you want to send it in so when you send your reel in you'll send your reel in resume with headshot. your resume in and on your reel yeah. let them hear you speak too because exactly. they want you know in case they throw you a line yeah you know hi you know i'm marcus mm -hmm. taylor this is my reel hope you enjoy it boom so now exactly. they've got a sense of how you yeah. speak how you look yeah and now they're that, seeing that's your just how how how, so, how things start and that's how i i started like i said i i i started as the extra then um, I came back to try to, you know, get into the stunt world, you know, and I, I, everything I, I see, I'm, pr I, I practice. I just, pr I'm, I love the practice because it doesn't feel like practice. It just feels like it's fun. Like when you're a kid pretending 
that was my practice. I didn't go to, um, uh, what do you call it? I didn't go to school for, right, for right. acting. I didn't go to acting school, any acting classes. It was right. just like the love, the love I had for cinema and, and action films. And when you do that your entire life, you become what you practice. So, and that's how I felt in my heart, but I wasn't going to vocalize that. I wanted to show them and rather just tell them. So I just started practicing on my own. I would find a few people that were like-minded and, and train with them and we would just shoot stuff. And, 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 and I always tell guys, I, know, men and women, start shooting 15 to 30 second, um, you know, fight reels, little, little, this, this mini fights, this, this, not that much because people's attention spans are like, not what they used to be. They do 15, 30 seconds. Right. Right. And, and do something that's spectacular, you know, and, and just keep continuing to do that and, and send them to coordinators, uh, some director, just anybody you, you, that has connections in this business. That's what right. I do. That's it. That's how, yes. you, that's how you do it. And so there's no one no. answer about how you find your casting director or your stunt coordinator or your producer or whatever. You've got to use yes. every avenue possible. You've got to go online. You've got to find out from yes. the Screen Actors Guild in your state mm -hmm. what's being shot. And sometimes, I would say before COVID, you had yes. to audition most of the time. Post-COVID, sometimes they yes. probably rely more on reels now. But what they want to do is they really want to see you do all aspects. So I would imagine uh, my suggestion would be to just like you said, I'd have some dialogue on it, just introducing myself, and then I'd have me doing techniques, and then I'd have yes. me reacting to techniques. So they see them all sides of you. And then, like you said, the more you like practice, that. the better you get at all of that until you can put a good reel together like your reel. I would have hired you on the spot after I saw your reel. I didn't have to, I yeah. don't have to guess. I right. saw it. I know what you can do. And so I would have said, I want you right there on the spot. So guys, if girls, if you're listening to this, yes. get your reel ready, get it done. Guess what? It's a camera. Those you got an iPhone. Let's just shoot it. I'm not talking about yeah, spending a lot of money doing that. Mm -hmm. And then two, get your resume done. Because you got to have a professional resume in your reel. And really, that's all you need. But don't go. That's the third stage. Don't take your third stage yes. and then bypass your first stage, which is Ex get, perfect your skill. Make yes. sure you have your skill down and make sure you can do both sides. And then I, I want to ask you, too, because we mm -hmm. talked a lot about method acting. Sometimes you'd go for an audition. You wouldn't be method acting. The sugar yes. night, sugar, yes. sugar roll, you went in in character. That was good. I've done that myself only one time. I got an mm. uh, opportunity with Canon Films. I didn't know, mm -hmm. but right before they crashed. But they wanted me to play twins in a film. And I was going to start with David Bradley or something. So I went to the Cannes Film Festival. I saw posters all over Cannes Film Festivals in France of me on the film, on, the, on all of these boards saying, yeah. upcoming Keith Vitale in this film. So, I, man, I couldn't believe it. But. They weren't convinced. Get this. Right. I'm playing two brothers. They weren't convinced I right. could play the evil brother. They knew me. It has, you know, the, I could play the nice guy. They saw some films, you know, Keith's good at right. the nice guy. But we're not sure you can play the bad guy. So oh. I hired an acting coach for mm -hmm. a week to transform me. And he had me in character for a week. And then I went in for the audition. And I had and everybody there. Monopoly, oh. I had all the guys, the owners, producers, directors. Everybody is there, casting directors. And I had some dialogue and I was supposed to show them the bad, the evil side of me. And I walked in and I just said, I just took it like this and went to dialogue and I threw it in their face. I said, I'm not saying a crap. I'm sick and tired of you people. And I went off on them. And then they were going through, they're going, what page is that on? What page? I don't even know where that dialogue's coming from. And they were going, is that in your dialogue? I said, shut up. I just got off. I went off on them. I just, I'm, you know, and I went off and then it went, oh. They started clapping and, oh, you're in character. I said, yeah, yes. I'm in character. You can play the bad guy. So there are times I, when you go in, if it's asking for that role, be that person. Yes. Dress like and be that person. But as you get your break, because you're great at that, but you get that break, you got to be the, you just got to go in and do what yeah. they say and have a good attitude like that. So, no, I, I'm telling you, you mm -hmm. hit all the marks. You hit the mark about how to yeah. contact your casting director or who to do. Directors. Just, just yes. go through any source you can to find out locally how to submit your reel and your resume. But guess what? You can be a martial artist as a 10th degree. 
You can have the best yeah. grill in the world and all that, but if you don't know reactions, you're not going yeah. any further. So steps two is reactions. And a Work lot of martial artists, reactions. a lot of martial Make artists that look good. don't like to react. They think it's their job to, you know, the show, the style. I'm like, yes, but remember, you ain't the lead. You are the villain that's supposed to get your butt kicked. So re react. You know, right. you can't. Right. Yes. It, and you tell the yes, story with the your emotional face. content that's comes right. from the um the villain taking the blows. And if you don't do right. that, right. you might they're gonna replace you. Right. You know, you I mean that that's that's a lot of people I, I've noticed that. A lot of traditional yeah. not even just, just traditional that, that are real martial arts um high level martial artists, they don't they kind of refuse to try to learn. And right. but it's 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 bad for them. They should um that's another thing about being in this business. You gotta like take away that ego where you're not, you know, uh coachable, you know. If you feel something is it's bad, bad, okay, you, yeah, you can have a talk, but most of the time they're just telling you to react, you know, and all this. So so I, right. I, I tell right. people to make sure you really concentrate on your reactions. That's just as, if not more important than the your actual technique of of, of attacking. So you, you practice practice losing, practice learning how to be a loser. Practice that. right, yes, right. And you got to yeah. And it's different than martial arts, isn't it? Because in martial arts, we're told yes, never sir. to telegraph. That's all you do. And in the film world, you must telegraph exactly. to show the yeah. audience your techniques. Well, listen, this has been great. I want you to give me, just give me the last bit of advice. Somebody's listening and they go, what advice would you give somebody for breaking into film? Yeah. You got any tidbits for them? We've gone over all the, well, the technical right stuff. Right now, it's, it's different than how I started. And it's definitely different because you guys had it tough. You know, it, like, like, got, like you made it right, easier right. for us, actually. So, but it's different now where you can't really go on a set because of the COVID um, um, uh, pr uh, procedures and stuff like that. But right. I'd say you can find um, the information um, from IMDb Pro. Um, they have, you know, um, the, the stunt coordinators, um, their, their names, their information. Uh, it's, it's a good investment. It's only like $20 a month. Uh, that's one way. And um, then word of, um, start right. sending um, these coordinators your your reels and try to do it every other month some people say every like twice a year i was like no i say every every month and it's like no. some people will respect your tenacity you know because you they want somebody to say like you know what i'm willing because i want to work i don't want to just play i want to work and work for you i want to be that guy for you so you know continue just, just be the uh, continue to keep keep um pushing through and um definitely submit your stuff to to anybody you can and start doing stuff for social media those 15 to 30 second rails I'm telling you people see that even when they're, and, and and not don't get discouraged because people are looking trust me they're looking at your stuff and then you start networking with other like-minded stunt people and then you like you'll get an invitation you know, to come out and, 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 get, you know, get your sad card. And it starts from there. I mean, once you do something continuously. Wow, it's great. I, you'll get it. You'll get it. Somebody will see you breaking that, trying to break that wall and give you a hand eventually. But you got to keep going. Mm -hmm. I just saw great advice. I just saw a quick reel. It was uh, Ben right, Affleck yeah. and his best friend, Matt Damon. And they were talking about when they first started, they got rejected mm -hmm. about 500 times between them. So it's not easy. You've got to take that rejection, but you've got to persevere. And what you got to do is like the martial arts, you don't give up. You just keep doing that. And first, start locally. Yeah. Now, it's hard if you're in Kansas or up on Ohio compared mm -hmm. to in Atlanta or Florida or, yeah. let's say, especially in California. It's a yeah. little, little easier because it's local there. But if you can get close, yes, like you, hopefully you'll move here. A lot of times, I'll choose local people for the simple reason is that they don't have to pay per yeah. diems. And, fly you out yeah. in hotels because you live here and sometimes it's tax, exactly you they get tax credits for uh, actually yes. 
hiring locally. So it's to their benefit to hire you. So if you're here, when you go in, and I think Keith Strandberg said it the best, Don Wilson said that, Seth has said that, you've said that too. Guess what? The number one common denominator yes. is to have a positive attitude. Of course, you're going to know martial arts and reactions and all of that. Yep. But if you're a, a nobody. dick, nobody wants to be around yeah. a dick and they're going to get rid of you. Nobody. I know what I don't want to be around somebody who thinks their ego is so great. Yes. No, just be kind, be nice, be compassionate, considerate, Basics. and do whatever they tell you to do. Well, listen, I, oh, thank you. And you told me a lot today myself. So this has been wonderful. And uh, I really love talking to you as, as I always. I look forward to you moving to Atlanta. So I want to thank you so oh, much wow. for being a guest on my show again today. So listen, guys, if you out there listening to this, if you enjoy this podcast as much as I enjoy interviewing my good friend here, then do me a favor. I want you to share this and like it. And I don't know how hard this is, but there'd be a red button called subscribe. It's free. It doesn't hurt. Hit that stinking button and subscribe so you can see more great interviews just like this. Until next time, ciao.